So one of our friends has a Jeep Cherokee, and he was all stoked about our Jeep engine build. That wasn't until he saw the price. And being a cheap ass, he decided to go another route. Now this is a good route for a lot of people that want an economical motor to swap into your car. Instead of like uh, one of our Trick Jeep motors or a Trick LS, he saw that um, the potential in the LM7 5.3 motor. Now, we really like the 5.3. This is GM's bread and butter. It was in a lot of trucks, a lot of SUVs. Um, these things are solid and there's tons of them. It's probably one of GM's highest number of production motors. So it's one of the cheapest late model motors in a junkyard. Um, that makes it a, a wonderful thing to swap. Uh, now we're talking about our buddy with the Jeep, but hey man, if you have an S chassis or uh, you know an FD or anything that you want to swap an LS to, and you're a little short on funds, this is a good solid alternative. Now this engine has like an iron block. Uh, that means it's pretty stout, it can take boost. But like our friend here, uh, he just wanted something that made way more power than the uh, Jeep engine that was cheap and reliable that he could put in. And well, let's go over what he did. Basically, he did uh, a lot of the prudent things that you should do if you get a good uh, used engine. He gave it a thorough checking out. Uh, upon receiving the engine, what he did is a compression and leak down check. That was really good, so he knew that he could continue. Now, a lot of times, if the, your engine has bad leak down compression, your uh, junkyard or used engine guys will let you swap it for another one. So that's always a good step. Next thing he did is he uh, stripped it all down, cleaned everything up, and he pulled the heads off. When he pulled the heads off, he saw that the bores were in great condition. Um, you could still see the factory honing marks. Uh, there was no scratches and no ridge. Uh, when combined with the good compression, compression leak down, he knew that he had a solid core that uh, he would probably be able to drive for a while. Uh, he also inspected the valves to make sure that um, they weren't sunk and they weren't leaking. That all looked good, so uh, he knew he had a, something solid to proceed with. Um, then he uh, went to the Holly Group, which makes a bunch of parts to make, um, you know, freshening these things up really easy. Um, what he basically did is change some of the high wear items that are uh, known to be minor problems with LSs and resealed the motor. So starting with the front of the engine, he replaced the timing scent with a comp cam set. Now this is the gears and the chain. Uh, this is kind of a wear item. The chain stretches. Doesn't cost that much, but it's essential to have that in good shape for a reliable, pretty powerful motor. So he uh, switched that out. Now when you uh, change that, you should really change your cam thrust plate. Um, you know, that's responsible for um, a lot of your oil pressure and also the cam securing the cam for thrust movement. So um, he replaced the stock thrust plate with a Holly cam thrust plate. While the engine was completely apart, he also got a Holly overall gasket set so he could totally change all the gaskets and seals. And this is always a good idea whenever you have an old engine because it sucks to have your fresh swap start to leak all over the place. So one of the major places you could have leaks are the front and rear main seals. And these are on separate covers on an LS. Uh, one of the things about the LS is it doesn't have dowel pins to assure alignment of the seal. So uh, not only did he use the seals from the Holly uh, overhaul kit, but he also used Holly's timing cover and rear cover alignment tools. Now these hold everything totally square while you're putting the bolts down so your seals are nice and centered on the crank. Uh, it makes your job a lot easier. Since the heads are off, he replaced the head gaskets with Holly MLS gaskets that came with the kit. Now an MLS gasket can uh, withstand a lot more pressure and it works really good than your normal composite gasket. So it's a pretty good choice. While he was in the Lifter Valley area, he changed the uh, old lifters with uh, crane lifters. Now these aren't really trick or anything, they're just uh, crane's uh, replacement lifters. So those are 
something prudent, like an engine with miles, like hydraulic lifters can get gummy and tick and make noise. They're pretty cheap, so you might as well change them while you're in there. So while we're going through the valve train, we replace the push rods and the rocker arms with SPI parts. Now the push rods are kind of just your brand new stock replacement parts, but the rocker arms are a little bit heavier duty than stock. Um, the fulcrum part is um, stuck in there better. Like the stock part is just swaged and um, with wear it can come apart and dump like little parts all through your motor. But the SBI parts are secured with a snap ring so they're not gonna walk and come apart. Uh, that's a good thing that doesn't cost much that prevents a major headache later. When the engine was going back together, the uh, head bolts were replaced with uh, Holly's replacement head bolts. Now, um, these are not torque to yield, so you could uh, just set them with torque. Uh, it's a little bit easier. Um, I kind of like torque to yield head bolts myself, but um, you know, if you're a first time engine builder, you can uh, use these, set the torque, forget it, and there's nothing wrong with it. Um, like I said, this isn't a performance engine, so those are a fine, easier to use alternative replacement for this kind of motor. So while we're cleaning everything up, uh, that also applied to the very, very bottom of the engine, uh, which is the pan, the oiling system. The first thing we did is uh, swap the stock oil pump for a uh, Mellings high pressure, high volume pump. Now a lot of these LSs, uh, they run kind of low oil pressure and We've never been a fan of that. Uh, the iron blocks uh, usually aren't as bad in that respect as the aluminum blocks, but you know, a little bit more oil pressure and volume never hurt. Uh, now, Holly makes a bunch of different oil pans to make your engine swap a lot easier. For this Jeep, uh, we found that the uh, F-body rear sump pan works pretty good. Um, that's gonna clear our Jeep's cross member. But Holly makes a bunch of pans and a bunch of different configurations, and chances are they have a pan that will make your swap a lot easier, too. Now, we had to do a couple things with the uh, stock windage tray to get it to fit, but um, that's all documented in Holly's really good instructions. And uh, when we put it on, we used uh, Holly's pan bolt set and their dipstick to just clean everything up real nice. Holly does make a few other things that really, really make your swap cheaper and easier. Now, if you've ever done a swap, the biggest headache is um, your accessory drives. Uh, figuring out what lash up of brackets, belts, alternators, tensioners, and uh, whatnot is always a headache to figure out how you're gonna get in your car. Now, Holly has complete accessory drive systems available for you that include the alternator, water pump, tensioners, um, even things like your power steering pump and AC compressor. Uh, very complete, very, very competitively priced, all figured out for you. All you gotta do is go to Holly's website, look at what configuration's gonna fit in your car the best, order it up and bolt it on. I mean, these parts can nickel and dime you to death when you're doing a swap, and it could be a headache trying to research and figure out um, every possible lash up of parts that, that could possibly fit. And even having something like a, the right belt can kick your butt, but Holly really makes this a lot easier. I can't talk enough about how much this really is a great thing to make your swap less headache prone. Another thing that's gonna make our swap easier is a swiveling water neck. So Holly makes one of these things that spins around and this can really help in the swap, get your hoses lined up. All these parts are really cool things and it's not just uh, Jeep oriented. It's for any of you that want to drop an LS into anything. I mean, shoot, if you have a classic Mustang, one of these five threes would go in there too. Or like I said before, an S chassis. So yeah, check out Holly. They got what you need and uh, We'll see about how our cheap ass friends Jeep runs. Now, you gotta go to Moto IQ and follow along in the Project LS Jeep swap to see how he does. Um, he's cheap, but he's not dumb, so we think it's gonna actually come out really nice. Uh, 
Also, go to MotoIQ.com, check us out. We have thousands of tech articles there. If you like our content, be sure to subscribe and come back. Uh, we do this every couple of weeks, and we come out with a new interesting video. So we'll see you in the next one.